The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. Welcome to the Rise of Buzz show. Oh. I am Joe Peroni. I'm Heidi Mancini. This is Ashley Ryan, and this is Carlos. <laughs> Ibarguin. Ibarguin. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like that name. Say, I, I it's a tough one. I can't even what say What nationality it. is that? So it's Basque, but, which is like a mm -hmm. specific region of Spain, the north, northern nice. Spain. Mm -hmm. Language, nothing like Spanish or yeah. really nothing like any other language. Hmm. But wow. that's another story for another. <laughs> so you guys are, you've been here before under different mm -hmm. circumstances, so today's yeah. going to be fun. Okay. So, <laughs> you guys call yourselves the happy nomad couple. That's correct. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be excellent because okay. I've got a lot of questions. Oh, good. And not just about traveling, but the, the big thing for me is that, okay, so let's start, how, how old are you, both of you? I'm 28. 28? I'm 30. 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're young. I'm going to say you were both in the corporate world yes. yes so let's start with that because mm -hmm. I find that really interesting because a lot of people in our culture we're told listen you graduate college you get your job you s try to sit there for like 40 years yeah. retire and then you're done and you're lucky if you go on vacation I don't know maybe once two a weeks year, a year yeah. once a, mm -hmm. you know whatever yeah. right? that type yeah. of thing and um, I think you're destroying that whole <laughs> concept. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you traveled the world for like a full year, pretty close. Yeah, it was about almost 10 months. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so tell me how you do that. Like, you obviously both have good jobs. You can tell us about that if you want, how, you know, you got into that. We did. <laughs> yeah. Did. So it did. So <laughs> Start off with that. Tell, tell us about can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Whose idea was it to, to say one day we're just going to quit our jobs and we're going to travel the world? Was it a collaboration or um, did one of you say? There was a definite moment. So when, when we went to Thailand a few years ago, we thought we were so cool. We were there for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. We were like yeah. on top of the world. People there that were like, I'm on the trip. I'm here for four months. And we were like, people do that? Right. And so that got the idea in our head. And then ever since we got back from Thailand, we were just like thinking about it and we both kind of despised our jobs. And so it, it dug the thought deeper and deeper until finally I was the one I think that was pushing him to do it. Yeah, for you, we were, we were doing it. Oh, we were it. going. It was already <laughs> happening. Me, I was like, well, you know, my, I'm, I'm, I might get a promotion. I'm showing us some promise yeah. over here. Like after years of frustration, mm -hmm. it looks like things are going my way. They're trusting me. They're sending me around the country to do these things maybe they trust me and and see a bigger role for me and then the time came around for them to prove it and they did and I was like all right yeah we're, we're doing this yeah. we're going on this trip so that's how it started and there, were, there wasn't really that much time in between I think no. we officially decided around the end of December beginning of January and yep. we left at the first week of April so it was pretty quick after after the final like we're leaving yeah, wow. and this trip in Thailand was in February of 2016. Yeah, it was not even. It was yeah. about so a year. February we 2016, left. we yeah. got the idea. December mm -hmm. 2016, we're doing it. April 2017, we, we left. left. Now, financially, not to get into your finances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But did you guys um, save all most of your money prior to going away, or did you decide to do the trip and you're going to pay for it later, or was it? You guys, at some point, had to get together with your finances to yeah, see yeah. what. Right. No, I think I think that's the question that people ask us the most. And right. luckily for us, I mean, we we didn't intentionally. I mean, when we decided to go on the trip, we did save a lot more intensely. But we had already we figured out our budget. We already knew how much we planned to. Spend. Well, let me back up. We decided how much we were willing to spend, and from there, we decided how long we could be away and what countries we could go to. And that's how we came up with our numbers. So we didn't, we just kind of had the money idea of how much we wanted to spend, and that's mm -hmm. what led as, to the rest of the trip. And as far as saving goes, I mean, 
we are both very financial conscious yeah, people, aka cheap, mm -hmm. frugal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, cheap. Yeah. so yeah. So I mean, we already had quite a bit saved up, mm -hmm. and it actually came to a point where it's like, are we gonna buy a second home mm -hmm. and make an investment that way, yeah. or are we gonna put that money towards a trip and invest in ourselves, ourselves. that way? And we went with the we went with the latter one. <laughs> yeah. So we were already spending plenty on spending the money. It was yeah. just a matter of uh, which one. Yeah. Now, when you stay, when you go on these trips and you stay in places, one of my friends, she travels all the time. Mm -hmm. And I always say to her, how do you afford to go on, why, how do you go away all the time? Yeah. And, but she, she's frugal with her money. Mm -hmm. And she'll find, like, places to stay that are really, like, one night. She'll listen, mm -hmm. I don't care if I stay in a luxury hotel. I'm only staying there one night or I'm only there yeah. a couple of days. Or mm -hmm. she finds a... B and B's or whatever yeah, they the call Airbnb. it to mm -hmm. stay there and they're cheaper. Mm -hmm. So she goes on vacation and trips all the time because she instead of you know Joe and I we, we like to stay in the more you know not expensive but Ritzier, you know because yeah. we don't know like we don't know where yeah. to right. go so we go okay well that's the name that's reputable mm -hmm. that's where we'll stay you know yeah. three hundred dollars a night right right you know so and I think I think that's like the biggest misconception about traveling is I think a lot of people think that to go on a trip you have to have a lot of money or be willing to part with a big a large chunk but really I mean if you are willing to do the budget route you can right. go a lot more places or go a lot longer or farther than you would normally think I think you might be a little less comfortable and mm -hmm. you might have to do a lot more things for yourself mm -hmm. like you know you can pay for a tour where they tell you hey we're gonna be in this city for these days this city for that day this is your you don't flight have to think there. about anything you don't have to think about anything well you're for paying you. for that right mm -hmm. that's in the it's price of the yeah. package yeah. But if you go ahead and do the homework yourself, which now we can and things to the internet, like mm -hmm. you can get your own uh, flights, you can get you know drop your own route, stay at the places you want, and honestly, if you're traveling, traveling, you know you're not like by the beach and just hanging out. Like if you really are trying to see a country or get to know the culture, you're not going to spend that much time in your room anyways. So mm -hmm. as long as you have like decent air conditioning and a decent bed no reviews of bed bugs you're like yeah you're all right okay. that's good you enough bathroom and, and wi-fi yeah yeah <laughs> that's true. what you need that's true. <laughs> but how do you change that mindset though of saying okay like i'm quitting my job and this is a good job and oh, yeah. i'm making pretty good money at this yeah. place right it was scary <laughs> yeah so yeah. <laughs> yeah it was it was scary but i think it also helps like that we were so frustrated in both mm -hmm. our positions it made the decision a lot easier it didn't feel like you know if you're later on in your career and you're like a VP or something you know it's tough to leave something like that because you are at the top and whatnot mm -hmm. but when you're at like middle management where we were like there's no worry of if need be when we come back yeah. we can find another similar position with a similar wage and plus nowadays, like travel is looked upon pretty, pretty positively, you know, like people will look at your resume and go, oh, okay, instead of like, oh, this person's a slacker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think we were just like confident in our ability to be able to get a job upon returning or, yeah. you know, to, to be scrappy. And if we had yeah. to like come back and do what we had to do right. to, to get back in the game. And the other thing that was like in the back of our heads, I think was, you know, we're in our late twenties. If if we don't do this now, like in a few years, what are we going to be doing? Like, who knows? Maybe we're we have a kid, or you know, we're in a we have our own businesses, right. or we're in really great jobs. So it kind of felt like now or never, right. and that's really right. what pushed us sense. too. Is like it's we true. can't leave next year. We have to leave like now. <laughs> right. Before life gets in the way. Yeah, no, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Which strikes me too kind of said it is that you do need to have a good amount of self-confidence mm -hmm. and make yourself valuable yeah. so when you come back people are going to want you anyway right right yeah. so that's a big part of it oh yeah we're really lucky in that both of our jobs pretty much told us they would hire us back upon returning and before we right. got back I had job offers from like my previous company yeah. I, I turned them all down because I am going a different way than that but yeah. I think We've we've done okay so far, so yeah. we're not we have you know some sometimes we're like oh we, maybe we should have a maybe we should have taken those jobs or something but right. we're really or maybe we're we fine. should have bought that house. I never think that. <laughs> I think that the way the numbers are yeah. in Vegas right yeah. now, I think that. Yeah. <laughs> not so, instead of the trip, but you know. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of people your age, they kind of they kind of are slackers. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. I don't need to tell you oh, that. You're oh, here we give go. It to <laughs> here we go. Give it to him. We have this discussion. This is going to be some millennial no, bashing segment. <laughs> so there's going to be it. He's going to be it. Oh, gosh. All right. So, yeah. So, so we're slackers. By, by, by percentage, and, by percentage, okay, yeah. it's, you know, it, it's, we can say that it's kind of a fact for a lot of people. You're the X generation. That's what my daughter says. She goes, there's the millennials, and then there's the X generation that they work and they do their... Oh, is that the difference? I guess. So, oh, I thought we were so by fact, by fact, <laughs> yeah, our so, generation is... Right, so okay. what, what separates you? Like, how are you able to just kind of like, again, I hate to keep naming the name of the show, yeah. but how do you rise above the, the people that are your peers? You can get a person like Ashley to be your significant other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the one who has all the crazy ideas so yeah. I'm the one who talks well, about everything well not only that you like don't let us be slackers oh yeah no I'm just I, just my nature is just to be like super productive and efficient and yeah. and I don't know I just I don't want to stay still and if I was the fact that we weren't happy in our jobs and it's true we we had fantastic jobs we were making yeah. plenty of there we had no problems with anything like that we just weren't being fulfilled and I think that's a big mm, thing with our cool. generation also is we're like we have great jobs but this is not what we want and that's right. what kind of pushes us also like if we're not gonna why are we gonna stay here and do something we don't want to do when we could be doing something that we would love to do and hopefully that'll lead us into something that we want to do for the rest of our lives or a lot longer right. or give us more um, what would the word be you know like a vision Freedom for the rest or, of our oh, life okay. or, yeah yeah both. No, that's that's great. Well, listen, there's a lot to be learned. Right? <laughs> like I wish I had this conversation maybe 20 years ago. Right. Right? <laughs> and you know, and and so back to the our general. I I don't think it's so much that a lot of people are slackers. It's just so much that, you know, we're in a place now where a lot of people are pretty comfortable. Like mm -hmm. my parents were immigrants. They fought hard for the life that they were able to give me and my siblings, and. For better or worse, now we're kind of like comfortable, right. you know. When we, instead of having that immigrant mentality of like hustle, hustle, keep it going, mm -hmm. we're like, all right, like I could keep making money doing something that doesn't really fulfill me or make me happy, or I could just like be happy with right. like life itself instead. <laughs> of just, it sounds like know. that's a better idea, mm -hmm. right? To be right. Happy. I mean, right. That's kind yeah. of the so line. sometimes I think that that's perceived to be slacking off when it's. I mean, some people are slacking off, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think every still. generation has its slackers. Yeah. <laughs> but it's sometimes that, you know, and I get what you're saying because with the with Joe and I, we've been in our careers for like 30 some years, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like okay, there for me personally, I'm not gonna speak for him. <laughs> I still love doing here because it's what I know, but there's yeah. still still a part of me that goes, I'm not getting joy out of oh, what I'm doing. I'm right. not like I used to be. It's right, kind of right. like you know, I know it. Let's do it. Let's get you're it done. Good at it, so. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then with the workshops people say but you're not going to make any money at that like when I start finally doing my workshops oh. but I feel like that would be something that would be fulfilling to right. me but it's not just about the money right. my mindset is though and I've been struggling with this since the beginning of January cut back your salon hours stop mm -hmm. working six days a week ten hour days it's ridiculous yep. cut down to four take your two days concentrate on the show concentrate my mindset because right. I've been drilled into my head since I was little work work yeah. work right and the day I don't work is the day that not me but <laughs> us the day that we don't work is the day that we don't have anything yeah and that's my mindset is like is it okay for me to say it listen is part of your fulfillment. I'm only working four days is it okay yeah. and I feel guilty saying to him I'm only gonna work four days mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's but a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a curve well, that's mm -hmm. why I could be taught today too by the way you know like I do make fun of the Millennials but <laughs> You know, like everybody does, yeah. so you just yeah. jump yeah. on, right? Yeah. But or listen, they, there, easy there are, <laughs> but there are a lot of positives to take from it too. Like I can tell you, part of it—it's—it's it's not a disease, but let's call it that for a second, okay. right? Like, if I have time off, and I, I'm sitting there, there's something about it that I'm totally uneasy, that mm -hmm. I cannot in any way relax. Gotcha. Because yeah. I've been told since I've been a little kid. You need to be productive. You need mm -hmm. to work. Right. If you're not working, you need to work on finding more work. Right. And so being that it's drilled into my head, I can feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. if, let's say I have a client at, say, whatever time, and that person cancels. 
I immediately feel the down just from that one hour yeah. of being unproductive. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that this is a good thing, by mm -hmm. the way. So right. I'm saying there's a lot to be learned from yeah. here right. because I think it's cultural. Like part of my fulfillment becomes what can I do rather than just right. being me, yeah. right? right? So it's right. all about doing something all the time. It's like having um, like OCD yeah. all the time. Right. Like I'm always trying yeah. to do something. And so, but I think that's like a successful you, you person's a, mentality. You know, I think that's yeah. like a personality trait more so than like a generational divide. Well, I was gonna me. say it's kind of funny because I feel like I used to be that right. way, and partially maybe it's because we were raised similarly. Yeah, of but, course. But I mean, yeah. even through you still are this that way. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, through college, a lot of times I had two jobs, not necessarily because I needed one, because I wanted to like try to get ahead and get a little more money all the time. Right. And even now, he can vouch for it. If I'm at home, if I'm not at work. I'm working on something. something. Like we bought a camper, so I'm like sewing diligently and you know Installing working flooring. On, yeah, figuring out what kind of what kind of business I want to start. There's always something. So even yeah. if even if you're not working to make money, you could still work on things that are making you happy or working towards your future and I mean a big thing for us and maybe this is partial for our generation also is that we we know that passive income is is an option also. So working hours don't necessarily always mean money it could just you right. could just be passively making money and that's kind of more of our long-term goal anyway so right. part of it could be that also is why millennials aren't like work 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 because right. they're like well let me do a little work and then make money while i sleep even though right. that's not possible for everyone but right. maybe th they that have that work, idea more in their head right and that work might not return dollars right now but you know you're working for those future dollars yeah, yeah I guess I, I find myself doing the same thing right like if I'm home and I'm going okay I'm gonna read mm -hmm. you know it's like what are you doing on your phone I'm studying <laughs> so there's a difference between yeah. just randomly going through garbage oh, right as opposed right. to you know enhancing <laughs> my knowledge you ask me what I'm doing on my phone you ask me what am I doing on my phone I do things phone? for enjoyment because my whole day is spent <laughs> talking and working. Yeah, yeah. So when I get on my phone, I'm looking up, I'm Googling stupid shit. You want to chill. And I just chill or I'm yeah. looking at Facebook and laughing on yeah. Facebook or whatever I'm doing. So I do nothing stuff. Where right. he's like, I'm just, yeah. and I do, I do nothing stuff, right? right? And then I feel bad because I'm like, why can't I be like him? Be honest. <laughs> right. It's like, Miss Scholarly. <laughs> scholarly. I'm looking yeah. up like, information. I, you know, I get free right. time and I'm like, oh, let me see about more traits or about sleep. bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. You know? hey, so. <laughs> do you think as a couple that this traveling has brought you closer together? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they say like travel, like make or break you. Mm -hmm. And, I, I have to say this. We we know three <laughs> couples that actually left around the same time as, or sorry, us and two other couples that left around the same time. One of them was married. It was kind of a social experiment. We've been, <laughs> we one of them was married. We've been together for almost five years now, four yeah. years. Um, and this other couple, they were a couple months before they went on their trip, and and we made it out. The married couple made it out, but the the couple that I was only dating for a few months, they they. Bound. They're not together anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of, you yeah. learn a lot about someone when I you're with think. them 24-7. Well, and you start to work as a team, more yeah. like a team. And, oh, and today's, yeah. Yeah. with everything today, everything is, uh, and I think not millennials, because we're, our generation's like that, too. I hate to say it. You guys there's trigger a lot me. Of, no, 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 <laughs> no. There's a lot of people that are my age that are very narcissistic, so it doesn't, to me, right. it's like, to me, I agree with what you said in some sense that it is a personality thing and how you're raised. You're, right. you're either, but... Uh, I think with you guys working together, it helps you guys to, to get closer. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And it, it kind of, we kind of got into a groove where it was like, you find the room, I'll figure out how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Like, we kind of mm -hmm. dictated, not purposely, it just kind of naturally happened. You're better at doing this, I'm better. So it it's kind of like teamwork. Mm -hmm. Even though you don't feel right. like you're working, it's, when you're constantly moving like that, it really yeah. is kind of like I mean, a we job. Were working. Yeah. It's, it's, us, it wasn't making us thing. money per se, but yeah, it was. It's yeah. a daily. Constantly figuring out how we're getting to the next city, how we're getting to the next country, what we're going to do In when we get there, way. where we're going to stay <laughs> when we get there, the cheapest yeah. way, do we need visas, mm -hmm. and just, yeah, there was a lot. <laughs> a lot to lot. think about. Yeah, a lot as much homework as we did yeah. beforehand, there was still plenty to do throughout the trip yeah. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Did you have any fights? I'd say so. Oh, not like not like fights, like full blown. Like we're not gonna talk to each other for yeah. days. But we would get like 
annoyed with each other. I mean, oh. we were around each other 24-7. It yeah. was not like, like we lived together. <laughs> we lived together beforehand. We had our jobs. So, you know, you're away most of the day, and then you're just together, like, maybe a little bit in the morning and then mm -hmm. at night. This was all day, every day. And in, that was and not in a bad crappy thing. Situations. That was not a bad thing. I'm just saying. It <laughs> well, was. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you're already stressed. Like, your personality, I don't, I'm, I think you, we are kind of like, as far as our mm -hmm. energy levels. Right. And Carlos and Joe, you guys seem like you're chill, and you're like, yeah. I'll have yeah. to get to it when I get to it. Yeah. Like, did you have to feel like you had to... <laughs> Yeah, you, like, like, um, well, for example, let me take this one really quick because this is going to be my point of view, and then she okay. can give her point of view. Travel What's days, okay. okay? Travel days. I used to always like oh. vlog mm -hmm. it while we were doing it, and like joke about <laughs> joke uh, joke about travel days because travel days. I'm like packing my bag, you know, walking, He's very calm. I'm taking my time walking. I'm not like speed walking. I'm like, oh, we'll get this subway to the airport. We'll get there. We're fine. She's like, but what if this happens? And what if that happens? And this happens? And we got to get there at this time. And, da, da, da. and like, she's running. And meanwhile, I'm like, do, 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 do. And she's just like, sometimes so that was thing, no it was good yeah. it was good because there were times that you got us there early and then things would go horribly yeah. wrong mm -hmm. so then luckily we had that buffer yeah. to get everything done before the plane left or bus left or train left or whatever it was mm -hmm. and then there were times when we, we we would do that and then we'd be stuck there for like three four hours <laughs> like <laughs> okay yeah, you never know you never know but yeah I mean the the, the most that our disagreements ever came up to was probably things like that, where it's just like differences and yeah. ideas of how soon we should leave, you know, just right, stupid right. stuff. Nothing no, major. no, nothing, no, nothing major. No. It would just be like a, like I mean, if you watch like these shows where people travel around the world and yeah. it's like a competition and like, you know, You're stuff like that, where it's other, like, you guys yeah. are no, but you know, there's just going to be, sometimes there's going to be frustration yeah, if you get to the hostel and you got there too late and now the rooms have all been sold out and now you're like oh crap well now last minute we got to walk around and find a new place you know mm -hmm. when things like that happen but i mean we, yeah. we let out our little frustration and then get back to working together yeah, all, and all you have is each other so i mean if you make the other one mad or something i mean yeah. you don't really have anybody else to, yeah. go, to turn to yeah. in yeah. person yeah. Yeah. No, right? <laughs> you don't want to get lost and be stuck out there alone so <laughs> So let's say, uh, without a doubt, you sold us on going on a trip, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that you have to go through a lot of preparation. And some of the ones I was thinking of that uh, I'm sure you thought of all this, but mm -hmm. you're doing a lot of hiking. So do you have to, like, be in shape first before you go? I mean... No, because you're climbing mountains. Are you doing that type <laughs> kind of stuff? We, Come on. I mean... Come on. <laughs> no, I mean... Oh, we didn't do that stuff every day. I mean, the no. hardest part was probably the fact that we had to carry our backpacks everywhere, and our backpacks were pushing 50 pounds, yeah. 30. Yeah. How much were they? Mine was 50. 50 years was Almost 35. 50 pounds. So that was okay, no, that was kind of hard, yeah. um, especially when you're in, like, tight spaces or there's a lot of people. Right. Um, but we, we did, like, we climbed, like, Machu Picchu and stuff, and that was hard, and I, it does help probably to be more in shape. But we were. But it wasn't like a make that. or break for that one. I mean, unless yeah. you're like way out of shape, you know, then right. yeah, then everything's gonna be hard. But like, like I wouldn't consider myself in shape, and I did it just fine. Hmm. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Now, what about food? Like, oh. I'm thinking, okay, so like you're That's going the best to like, part. is it? Oh. Okay, I'm go right for it. Sorry, food. sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, but I mean, you don't get sick. Like, yeah. I'm oh, thinking you about. Oh, get sick all the time. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now, like, are there like things that month. you take before you go, like like vaccines, things like this, so you mm -hmm. don't like die of some weird <laughs> stuff? Yeah. So we we went to a travel doctor before we left, and they actually told we gave them a list of all the countries we planned to go to, and they said you should get these vaccines, or these are the ones you should consider getting. And then they also right. um, wrote us prescriptions if we wanted to get them before we left. So we ended up getting, I think, like seven shots each. Things yeah. like tetanus and um, what else Hep do we get? Hepatitis. Hepatitis. Um, Some like regional stuff like um, we, we didn't do malaria. Yellow, well, oh, yellow fever, you have, you have to. get to. yellow fever mm -hmm. to, in order to enter some countries. They literally yeah. give you a little book that says, I've received this vaccine. And if you yeah. don't have that book, they won't let you in. Unless it's yeah. one of the airports that will do the shot on, on site. On site. Yeah. But that's not a lot of airports. So right. um, so we had to get that one. And then we did take, um, we took like, you know, diarrheal medicine with us and yeah um 
altitude sickness medicine, stuff like that. But we didn't end up taking a lot of medicine. We no, took we it bought sometimes. a lot of malaria pills, and we didn't end oh up even <laughs> using them because of all the crazy side effects yeah. that it has and whatnot. We're like, you know what? Take your chances. Yeah. I thought for sure I had malaria at one point, but <laughs> really? I made whole it out. Her face was bent in her forehead, had like oh, a huge man. lump. And he, she's, and like, <laughs> she's like crying, like, this is malaria. So yeah. she <laughs> hates taking pills, like, cannot take them. Like, she takes it, she drinks water, and, and I'm like, did yeah. you do it? She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and the pill is still there. So, but when that happened, she magically like, found the fortitude to just, like, get them down well, for a couple of days. we were in Kenya, and I, I, one of the hotel we were at, the worker was like, you don't mess around with mosquitoes in Kenya. Like, you'll get malaria. So that freaked me out. And so oh I started God. taking, I, we even, we were drinking um, apple cider vinegar, like, shots, because that's supposed to make them avoid you. Yeah. So we, we tried, but, I mean, we're fine. <laughs> but yeah. we did get sick a lot. Just, it probably was just food stuff, but I think more than food was, um, changing climates all the time and changing altitude right. a lot that right. messes with you more than you realize right so and just like having long nights dehydration um having nights where something goes wrong and you know you're on a bus longer than you thought and maybe you didn't have enough water or you didn't yeah. eat and you just you, you're just around yeah. a lot of germs and right. things but i think it was completely yeah. normal we there was only one time where i felt really really sick and I, I lost my voice for like four days. Yeah, it's my, a long time. It is yeah. a long time. And my eyes, I was, I was yeah, in Japan, I, my eyes would like, were like glued shut every morning, just yeah. mucus. And um, I just, when I would stand up, I'd feel dizzy. I had to stay home for two whole days. And it, it what made it worse was that we were crossing the border into Vietnam. And some of the Asian countries, they make you do like sort of a self-help, like a, health assessment when you go in they like they won't let you into south korea if you say you have a cold like they'll quarantine you or they'll pull you to the side or something so i was like please don't let vietnam be one of those places because i'm not going to pass like right. i'm so sick i couldn't even talk to the immigration officer i was like croaking but somehow i got it yeah they didn't but oh they didn't, they didn't. and as soon as we got back to v or as soon as we got to vietnam i got better right away yeah it was the pho. it was the pho. 100 <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent. So, the water Right, like I can't even go to Tijuana without getting sick. Yeah. So, <laughs> how in the world are you going to like Vietnam and what Laos and yeah. Yeah. Cambodia? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where do you get water there that you can drink? Just well, bottled. For, yeah, every they have convenience stores like everywhere. Seven Elevens are really popular yeah. in Asia. They have Seven Eleven. Oh everywhere. man, Seven Eleven's huge. Seven Eleven's really? way bigger yeah. internationally than it is in the U.S. I think yeah. it's more of a culture thing in a way. Yeah. But even more than that, we took um, we have a bottle called Life Straw bottle, and it has a filter built into the water bottle. So even if we take, we brought a couple water bottles with us to try to cut down as much plastic, so we didn't have a lot of plastic water bottles. But we'd even bring like water in the bottle, and then we'd put it in the Life Straw bottle when we were ready to drink it, so that it yeah. would be filtered. So we did that as much as possible, and sometimes hotels would give you free water, or, you know, filtered water. But I mean, sometimes I think we probably did get sick from the water. But there's there's only a couple countries that they tell you absolutely don't drink the water, like right. India. But yeah. other than that, I think and I wouldn't say it was probably from drinking the water, right? I mean, who knows? I don't know. We I felt like some of it may have been. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. yeah. So I hate to break it up for a second, but we have to go to a break, Let's do and it. then we'll be right Let's back. <laughs> I'm the world's worst cleaning lady. I'm here in your home having a pretty spectacular Tuesday. But I don't notice the loose rug at the top of your stairs. And that's about to become an issue for me. And if you've got the wrong home insurance coverage, my medical bills could get expensive. So get all state. Welcome back to the Rise Above show. I am Joe Peroni. I'm Heidi Mancini. And we are here with a happy nomad couple. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay, so we're definitely sold on this. So <laughs> the first problem I have, or we have, is our dogs, right? Oh, yeah. Like, we got mm -hmm. nine months. I'm kidding. I don't think I'd go that long. But anyway, <laughs> we, we have a long time without our dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, who takes care of, well, you don't have to tell us who, but yeah. how did you get that taken right. care of? All right, yeah, so we, do, we have two dogs. We were lucky. Yeah, we, a lot of things fell in place for us, like, at the perfect time. So I'll, I, we'll just tell you that. My, so we have a house also. So the dogs were the number one thing. If we can't get the dogs in a good situation, we can't go. 
Right. So my sister, they were moving out of their apartment at the time. So a few months early, we said, you guys can stay with us. And then you'll just, you know, pay the rent on the house and take care of the dogs. And, you know, we'll buy the dog food and everything. Just make sure they're happy and alive by the time we get back. <laughs> mm. And that so that worked out for us because I know a lot of people probably don't have that option. And I don't even know if we'd have another option if we wanted to go again. But at the time, it just it was just good timing. Right. Hmm. And yep. the, the mortgage on the house. Right. Don't, yeah, you don't need to tell me how much money all that. But I mean, mm -hmm. do you have to pay it up front for a year? Is that how you do it? No, my sister paid the mortgage. So we didn't, oh. we didn't charge her higher than the mortgage. We just, actually, we charged her a little lower because we paid for the dog food right. and stuff like that. But um, she just, they just covered what the mortgage yeah. is. And we, we have a small house and the expense is not a lot. So right. it was It worked out for, for everybody. everyone. But yeah, mm -hmm. we were lucky that we were able to find a renter hmm. and dog a dog sitter, sitter <laughs> all in one for that long. and the confidence because it's family you know? yeah mm -hmm. right yeah so okay so, so it did fall into place pretty yeah, well. yeah exactly all right so now you're sitting you're looking at a map mm -hmm. now do you spend like money on going through let's say like nine different cities or are you doing this piecemeal one at a time once you start moving each place. We did a little bit of both. We we started out with um, the countries we wanted to go to. We tried to create a route that would make sense. You know, we're not going to go here, here, and then come back this way. That that would not be economical. Right. So we tried to find um, the easiest routes that we can do, like buses or car, you know, trains, stuff like that, instead of planes. And then the one the times where we did have to take flights, we tried to find the best place to leave from to get to the new place the cheapest right. so we didn't really plan out any of the cities we there were some that we were like we're going to Machu Picchu when we go to right Peru, there are things but, that you but have in order to, to get yeah. there we didn't know what we were doing right. so that kind of came as as we were going we came up with it and a lot of it helped because we learned from other travelers mm -hmm. um, they gave us a lot of recommendations and a lot of locals too our very first country we went to we only had our first two cities planned and he was like you should go here and here and we went to the two was like the yeah. most amazing stuff we probably we wouldn't, wouldn't have, have known done. to go because they were small yeah i mean doing it as you go is a lot more rewarding i think because right. if you have everything planned out you have no room for flexibility and if you right. don't like something you kind of are stuck with it and right. it's a lot easier to just do it as you go and i it's have to harder, take credit for that one yeah because <laughs> if it was up if to was her up to it would have been like yeah. down to the day everything would have been true. done before but i was like you know what we might want to mm -hmm. leave this place earlier or, or you know right. spend more time in this other place i think the one thing we did is we had one really big flight and that was from south america to africa and that's the only one we booked ahead of time just because we knew it was going to be expensive so we booked it a few months ahead right. everything okay. other than that was completely on the fly but even there we were not going to go to brazil but once we did our homework and saw that oh the flight out of brazil is the cheapest between, it was either going to be where we were, which was going to be Argentina. Mm -hmm. so instead of staying in Argentina longer, we left a little bit earlier, spent some time in Brazil to get that cheaper flight over to uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. So what was the most memorable experience you guys had? <laughs> most memorable. I, I think I know for me. I think my most memorable moment was going and that it it's like the most incredible thing we did we ended up going on safari twice which was like right. in, insane like i don't even right. really know how we made that happen so kruger national we park? did kruger national park yeah. which in, is my favorite that's in uh it's in south, south africa, africa. Yeah. right like yeah. three four hours away from johannesburg yeah right and it was cool because we I self drove that up. oh yeah? okay yeah <laughs> so now you know how to get there <laughs> we well i i loved south africa in we road tripped like the whole south the whole border yeah, up with the Cape ocean. From Cape Town to Johannesburg. Yeah, and then we went up to Johannesburg, and then we went to Kruger, and we self-drove through the park, which is crazy. You can just drive, and there's like a lion just crossing the street. There's a family of elephants, and you're just in your little car yeah. watching it. Okay, and you so how scared did you get? <laughs> there was one time that was a little scary, and it wasn't even us. Right. We were in. <laughs> so there's when there's when there's like a really special animal, the cars, you know, back up. Everybody's yeah. looking. Yeah. So there was this one time where a family of how many elephants do you think there were? So yeah. So so we like, were lucky enough to be well, there at the time when like all the animals just gave birth oh, and yeah, they're all their babies. Ba so you mm -hmm. see a lot of babies of every yeah. animal. So yeah, there was like a herd of elephants with like, Maybe, like 20 pipe. elephants. Yeah, 20 elephants. <laughs> Tons and, of babies. And so stopped and Super this one car 
<laughs> this one car is probably like, oh, what are all these people stopped for? Oh, elephants, I've seen this. And they go around go. us. But they warned us when you come into the park, like, be careful because, you know, elephants are very protective of their, of their young. young. Yeah. So this car goes down and happens to, like, be coming towards, like, a young, a young uh, elephant. And the mom is just not down with that. She, like, and she, like, after charges car. after this car. No and this car stops and it starts going reverse <laughs> back when, up. Like, you know, the, this person driving is freaking out. So they're reversing, car. like, side to side. Like, yeah. they can't yeah. go straight back. We can just tell they're having a heart attack in the car. Yeah, and, and you see the elephant, like, like <gasps> yeah. And it's making the, you know, it's making the sound and the ears are, like, you know, oh, no. pointed towards like it. It's a, and it's in aggressive this. mode, and the car is just going back. And of course, you know, this day and age, I whip out the phone and I'm like, "Gotta get this." Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna watch this guy die. Yeah, we're like, we need to have this on film if it happens. Oh, but there was one time that was a little actually scarier. It wasn't scary, but uh, when we were on safari in Kenya, our uh, the van, this time we went on a tour, so we had a driver in like a little safari van. Um, our van broke down and we were watching wildebeest and we just saw some elephants or they were behind us or something yeah. and so they the one of the other vans tried to pull us out of the bush because we weren't on a road anymore we were just in the grasses <laughs> and um, when they tried to pull us out the front what is that called the, the part of the car it was like a grill like, like a, a protective grill. grill you know the ones that you add pulled off. Right. so so they just tried to pull us out it, it didn't work <laughs> So, and you're not supposed to get out of your cars because who knows where the animals are, you know, there's yeah. tall grasses and right. things. But there was nothing else they could do. They couldn't pull us because the van with all the people was too heavy. So we had to get out. We're probably some of the only people who's been on those lands that were on tour there. Yeah. Just walking. There's animals, you know, who yeah. knows where they're going to come from. Right. And we had to wait for them to pull the van out. And then we had to get into a van full of other people and, like, join their tour. Right. So that it, it wasn't scary, but something could have could happened. Could have happened. Right. But it was an experience. Videos. It was kind of fun at the time because we felt, like, super special. Yeah. But we were upset because we missed the, the migration then. right the wildebeest crossing we were we were like really lucky to be there at the time when um if you see lion king and you know when the wildebeest are crossing the river it's some yeah. of them don't yeah. make it we were there during that you know a few weeks long and we would have seen it but because our car broke down we missed it by a few minutes right. so uh, we got there and they're just dead <laughs> and there's like crocodiles waiting in the water oh, like snapping yeah. up at them as they're crossing yeah. some break their leg on entry oh. and the rest just trample them so when mm -hmm. we got there there was just so many dead wildebeest mm -hmm. in the river. Oh man! Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Like millions migrate, and like not obviously not, not all of them make it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's oh, your that's what I was mine. <laughs> uh, it's a toss up between the pyramids, just because mm -hmm. like right. that's something that my grandfather wanted to see and never. My mother kind of took it upon herself to see it, and she hasn't gotten to as of yet. So it's kind of like been passed down. So it was like emotionally, like oh, you know. Finally, one of us landed and uh, and took that like in. And plus, they're just and like his mom sister amazing. have Egyptian names. Yeah, that's exactly. how much his grandfather. And they're, then they're Mexican. Yeah, that's how much his grandfather <laughs> loved Egypt. Right, right. So that was awesome. And then yeah, but then the the best one was uh, when we were in Bali, in uh, oh. Indonesia. We were riding around on a scooter, and uh, we come upon this little like puppy. This little, like, just street puppy that's just, like, walking in the middle of the road. I think I almost hit it. Yeah. I was like, oh, stop, turn back around. The puppy, like, came immediately to us and just, like, hung around us. And then I kind of tried, we tried to, like, part ways after, like, 40 minutes. And the cute little thing just crawled. I put my helmet down from the, the bike helmet. And the cute little thing just, like, crawled up and just got into a little Climbed ball, like, the in helmet. the helmet. We're like... <laughs> All right, that's it. This dog's staying with us. So we took it around with us to like all I the sites. I put her sites. in my backpack on our scooter. Yeah. And we went to temples with her. And she's like peeking waterfalls. out the backpack, like just taking in the air. It was so oh. adorable. Yeah. And everyone would like stop us like, oh, you know, you, you should take it. You should take it with you. And we were like thinking like, all right, what do we got to do to like make this happen? Mm -hmm. But we went to a pet store to get uh, food for her. And he told, we explained the whole story to him, and he's like, oh, you know, just leave her with me. I'll find her an owner really quick. And, yeah, I mean, we did that, and within, like, three days, he found a, a forever home for her. So that was nice wow. that, like, yeah. that was, that was he, awesome. He, like, texted us pictures of Yeah, he kept us in the loop the whole time, yeah. and, like, yeah, it was mm -hmm. really cool.
cool it was experience. Cool experience. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So what did you learn about people from traveling to all these places? I think I learned that it's not that scary. Like yeah. People are a lot nicer than you would think, you know, a right. lot more welcoming. And there's, I think the best part is that all the countries that people got to go to, like Colombia, Egypt, you know, things like that were the best ones and those were the people that were actually the warmest yeah and that were the most willing to you know help you and wanted to meet you and were excited to see you and right. everywhere where they were like oh they don't like americans like they actually loved americans oh, they yeah. they're excited to see they're excited for tourists in general you know right that's their whole the, their business sometimes so i think in general we just learned that it doesn't pay to be scared or worried because everything always right. worked out for us I mean, we're we're lucky, but listen, yeah. anything can happen, right? Yeah. We could be sitting right here, and a wheel comes off of a plane that's flying over, and it comes crashing down, and whatever. I think I took okay. that from a movie, <laughs> but uh, you know, like anything can happen wherever you're at, right? But we were just, you just got to be positive and just go out there and meet people. I mean, e Egypt, everyone's always gonna think like, oh, Egypt, they must hate us. It's this, it's that. No, we got there. Our uh, the hotel that we were staying at had a driver and the driver came to pick us up and immediately he's like where are you guys from and we're like america we're he say. just stopped and he goes oh my god i love americans and gave, <laughs> gave, gave me like the hug. biggest hug yeah. and then gave her a hug and he was super nice and so just excited. like yeah and then yeah columbia every, apparently everyone's a drug lord selling cocaine no no you know like obviously <laughs> that's not it and, you know, in yeah. the media, they're going to portray Americans a certain way, too, right? And then when right. tourists meet Americans, they're like, oh. So it's like everyone always has that, that moment where you're like, oh, I guess it's not as bad as <laughs> like they the try to make it seem. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So how big are the pyramids when you get up close? They're huge, they're man. Really I don't even know how big they are. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's actually nine pyramids total, I think, in that area. But there's the, there's the three famous the three ones, famous and ones, then there's yeah. the Great Pyramid is like the famous one. Right. But if you go to a certain area, um, you can see all the ruins of all the pyramids like in a line, kind yeah. of. And the craziest thing about the pyramids is that you know when you see the pictures, it's just in the desert. But if you see pictures from the other side, the city is right next to the pyramids, so it's yeah. kind of weird. Like, yeah. From our we we ate breakfast every morning on the terrace, and the the pyramids are right there across from us. And the hotel was thirty dollars a night. Thirty dollars a night. Oh my god. And we just woke one up road dividing us from the, the pyramids. from the pyramids. And we had free breakfast every morning. They gave us <laughs> wow. drinks any time of the day we wanted, like teas, everything. bottled Coke. water, yeah. everything, everything. And thirty dollars. And the pyramids. Amazing. We woke. We watched the sunset at the pyramids. They have a light and laser show at, at a lot a of places laser in Egypt. Show with it's really Egypt crazy. Is Egypt loves this. With Stuff. laser shows every temple they have this <laughs> everything so it was nice because you usually have to pay to get in to see it but from our terrace we could watch it and hear it for free it was right. the best deal i think we got yeah the no trip. it was amazing the ride yeah. from the airport was free was included, and, all that. Yeah. and i'm sure there's people you know two doors down at the hilton that are paying the three five hundred bucks a night same view yeah same view maybe the amenities are a bit nicer but for the you know yeah not we're not worth it for mm -hmm. us wow, that's pretty cool <laughs> So you also went to, uh, like, Sweden? Um, no. We went to Was it Serbia. Finland? Serbia. Serbia. Yeah. Okay. That's the only European country we went to. And we only went there because his, he has a friend who's Serbian, and he was getting married. And we happened to be in, in Egypt, Egypt at the time, and we were going to go to India. And so it wasn't that far. So we went perfectly to go to the wedding, be in Serbia for a week, and then, and then fly out again. Right. Hmm. Other than cool. that, we could not afford Europe on our budget. Yeah. No. Oh, lose, right. mo lose money on the conversion. Yeah. And it says yeah. Finland, Sweden, Denmark. No. Oh, okay, so in the beginning, we did plan on going to, to oh, Europe. yes. But then um, after we started, like, researching more and learning, we decided that we were going to be too rushed if we do Europe, and it was going to be too much money. Right. So okay. we decided Well, that's actually to, a good story, too, because yeah. sometimes you got to think on the fly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to figure Just it out. the daily expenses would be too expensive, and... Yeah, you're you're converting to euro, so I think it's what like a dollar is or a dollar thirty is like a euro, you know. Yeah, whereas you're going good. to these other places where your dollar goes way way further, you know. You're, like you're having whole meals for like five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you making these money exchanges? Is that difficult? 
Like you have some currency, you mm. fly into another place, and all of a sudden, right. bang, you're in Cambodia. Like, yeah. what, what right. are you doing there? So this was Carlos's job. <laughs> Cambodia this, uses the thing. U.S. dollar, so it was actually oh, very okay. easy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong But no, 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 no. <laughs> That's good but point. no, but I mean, well, yeah. we did a, we got a Charles Schwab checking account, which is really awesome because mm -hmm. they, we hate ATM fees. Like, yeah. my friends know me. I'm notorious. Like, we'll be somewhere. Mm -hmm. I will leave and drive the five minutes to go like to the nearest ATM that's mine and not get the fee and come back, you know, because I'm not paying the five dollars to access my own money. So this this account, what it does is it, you know, the the machine that you pull from will charge you at that time. But uh, Charles Schwab reimburses you at the end of the month. So you end up not paying any of the ATM fees. Yeah. And since you're going straight from their ATMs, you're not needing to convert money. You're just pulling straight out in their yeah. currency. So the, so the best way to get currency, to get the best rate, is actually to get from their ATMs. So right. what you want to do is you want to get an ATM card that d that will, will reimburse you the fees or doesn't charge a fee for you to use a different ATM. Right. Um, and then we also have a credit card that charges no foreign transaction fees. So if we could use it, we used a credit card whenever possible, which yeah. wasn't often, but we did because we get points yeah. and it didn't charge us anything and it's just easier, you know, if something goes wrong, you can, right. you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but you saved the 3% when you used the when, card that we did because otherwise, yeah. yeah. And when we were leaving the countries, we usually, we didn't take out a lot of money at a time because we could do free ATM transactions. So we only took out as much as we needed. And so by the time we left the country, we didn't have a lot of currency left over, so we never had to do currency transactions other than with right. the little bit of U.S. dollar that we did right. have. But most of the time, we just took from an ATM as soon as we got in the airport or a bus station, and that was all. Yep. The only place where it was a nightmare was Zimbabwe, because they, they use the U.S. Yeah. dollar, but their banks don't have a lot of U.S. dollars. <laughs> so you have to be there at like 6 a.m., get in line so that when the a when the money arrives and the ATM is mm -hmm. like ready for business it's like gone mm -hmm. so we never made we never it there in it. time <laughs> so luckily we had yeah. uh, US dollars with us that we mm -hmm. had traveled with and we ended up spending like all of it yeah so there's a lot of considerations here Tons. yeah oh yeah. yeah and you learn yeah. as you go like you, yeah. you start to realize, but the banking was a huge one for us because it's if you're if you don't do that, you're just losing money for no reason. Right. So we definitely did our research on that before we left. Um, but everything else, you kind of just learn on the fly about the buses and getting places right. easily. And and also that's we were on a big trip, you know. If you're like gone for ten days and you don't mind paying the five dollars for them to convert your money and whatnot, then that's you know yeah. that's fine. You're on vacation mode and whatnot. But for us to be gone for almost 10 months we right. had to be clinical with, with it plus like even if we were gone for 10 days we would be because that's just that's just, that's just the way you that's just us. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was it like uh machu picchu oh machu picchu is amazing oh uh, yeah it, and it was really cool because we did like a four-day trip there's multiple ways to get to machu picchu you can do like the one where you hike and you're carrying your backpack and it looks like it sucks so we didn't want to do that you can take a but, bus um, straight to the city nearby called bus. Aguascalientes mm -hmm. and then take a bus from there to Machu Picchu and never and do have to do a day. single hike yeah but we did this one called Inca Jungle Trek and uh, the first day you bike downhill in a mountain and it's you're so high up that the cl the, you're in the clouds so you can't see over the cliffs and you're biking over waterfalls I, ended up, I actually fell off my bike and <laughs> that was a rough day yeah. <laughs> but um, that, that was crazy and then, the, and then at night you go whitewater rafting which, so this is all one day the yeah. second day you hike for like 8 hours and you end up the end of the hike is a hot springs, hot springs. Yeah. so you, you're tired you go to the hot springs the third day you go zip lining Wow. over a river like 10 different lines um, and then on the last day you climb Machu Picchu and you we stay there the whole yeah. day and, it's and that's incredible. a hike from the city to from the town nearby to Machu Picchu it's a hike it's an hour <laughs> of all stairs and yeah. it doesn't wow. it doesn't be in a little bit of shape. You do. Right. But you could take the you bus take there the bus. if you, the if you minute weren't bus in ride. shape. But, and the, it, you know, an hour of stairs, it may not seem that bad, but the stairs are all different sizes. So once, one step <laughs> three feet high, and the next step is like two inches, and yeah. you're just like adjusting, <laughs> yeah. and it's five o'clock in the morning, and you're already, your Everyone's elevation is, <laughs> is killing you because you're not used yeah. to it. So. Everyone's got their headlamp or their cell phone out with the light. Yeah, you're climbing in the dark. Because you want to yeah, get up there crazy. before sunrise. Yeah. It was absolutely but breathtaking. It was worth it. It's one of those things where, like, 
it is exactly like the picture, but it actually like that's rewarding that it is exactly like the yeah. picture. Yeah. You're not like, oh, I could have just looked at this online. You're like, no, this is exactly like the pictures. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, so what are the places do you want to go to? Have you seen everything you want to see? No. All no. Of go to all of them. <laughs> when you start to see places, you realize how many more places you want to see, I think. Yeah. Um, Lately, we've been talking about hitting up all the stands. Oh, yeah, we want to, like, go to, like, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan and all those. Azerbaijan. I think our next one, hopefully, in my mind, is Belize and Guatemala. I want to, we haven't done Central America. And the huge one on my list, like, the ultimate right now is Antarctica. But that one's very expensive. That's, there's not a budget option for Antarctica to go I mean, all in. Just... But I want to make it there someday. Right. I want right. to continents. Huh. Yeah. So what's to see in Antarctica? Penguins. Penguins. Penguins seals, <laughs> whales, glaciers, you know, just completely untouched Research land. Research centers. <laughs> yeah, just, just to say you did it, I just guess. To hear, just, just to feel to... that cold and to hear that silence, too. Yeah. That would be pretty amazing. Oh. Pristine. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't go to, in, in Europe, you went to, like, you didn't go to, like, Italy. No. No. Do a been Euro to trip. Spain, France, we've been, yeah. England. I've been to Germany, Austria, Hungary. So we've been. But, yeah, for this trip, we just couldn't. Mm-hmm. It couldn't be in the itinerary. Uh, we want to. But yeah. Someday. So you like, the most people do not go to. Yeah, because, you know, also the age that we're at, it's places that we can go where maybe later on in our lives we just won't want to deal with with its mm-hmm. congestion and humidity and the smells and the, <laughs> the cow dung everywhere and the cows in the middle of the street everywhere. Yeah. You know, there's India just things that we might not want to do. But, yeah. like, Italy, you can do that when you're 85. Oh, right, of course. You know, yeah. Denmark, Sweden, all these places, it's comfortable. You know, yeah. and it's very, the language is different, the food is different, but it's Western civilization, mm-hmm. you know. And so you did go to Japan this time, yes. though, too. Yeah. Tell me about that. Japan was cool. It, Japan, Japan, well, for you, that was tough because that that's was, where, I got that's really where you sick. got sick. Yeah. But I think I really liked Japan because we had just come from China, and China is really, it's really hard. It's, it's not a bad place to get used to yeah. and you know it's a lot of people mm. and pushing and spitting and it's right. just really weird the but we nature go to is Jap- beautiful but the cities are like congested. very dirty mm-hmm. yeah, yeah just yeah. but yeah. japan is everything is it's like perfect yeah. like everything yeah. is clean <laughs> the people wait for you to get on the subway first you know i've the, been to the, tokyo that's yeah yeah the, the cabs are like the doors open up automatically yeah, yeah. Everything. so nobody touches anything. The right. toilets are warm. Yeah, and, it's yeah. better chance of English warm speakers. To- <laughs> <laughs> warm yeah, toilets. Kind of crazy. Warm toilets. <laughs> so we don't have much time left. Uh, Tell everybody uh, where they can reach you because I think you have a website and you yeah. sell yeah. some things and you can help people travel. Yeah, um, Tell we them. <laughs> make sure Tell they them. know. Okay, we have a website. It's happynomadcouple.com. You can reach us on any of our social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We have um, some YouTube videos that are kind of helpful of how we planned our trip, what we did in the beginning before we even left, and we do have plans for more YouTube videos in the future. Um, so if you have any questions, definitely you can shoot us a Facebook message or on Instagram or anything like that, and we'd be happy to help you. We also have um, a budget sheet that is on our website. We have our entire trip budget listed, every single s- dollar we spent. We spent yeah. yeah, everything yeah. we spent on our trip, so you could see exactly if a country is within your budget or not, or we, what we spent. Um, and we also have a template that you can buy for a dollar if you want to start planning the budget for your trip as well. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, one more thing, because I have to know this. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> when you when you look at that um, that sheet with the uh, when it's itemized out, mm-hmm. yeah, will you have your own personal one on there with uh, Kruger National Park in South Africa? We can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's in there. It's in the South Africa. The, it's one, within but South yeah. Africa, but we yeah we'll separate the Kruger yeah. stuff. Yeah. You guys trying I, to go? I would think about it for sure. I, yeah. I highly that would be recommend great. it. Oh, it is. They have it giraffes amazing. there? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. We saw the big five. Giraffes, wow. lions, elephants, rhinos. wildebeests, and rhinos. And leopards. Jaguars. Yeah. Yeah.
whatever. Uh, you were able to get food there? Like, they, oh, they have actually... they have beautiful campsites. <laughs> we could we can market the crap uh, out of yeah. this place because it was awesome. Well, South Africa's simple. It's very it's the safari is very well done. They have campsites within the safari, and yeah. in the campsites they have restaurants. They have little places you can get food, or you can just go to the like convenience stores or supermarkets at, right outside the gates, and yeah. you can just like get a cooler and pack your own. That's what we did. Yeah. We just brought our own sandwiches and oranges and waters and whatever, and we and there's never maps left. and paved roads. They have lists of some are where, asphalt, but some are just paved dirt. But every Everything is very simple. Yeah, they have signs and yeah. that, and they have a, a place where when you get it, go to the campsite, it'll say like where the animals have been seen, and they have little magnets where you could like people can say, oh, I saw a jaguar here, and so right. you're like, oh, I'm gonna go to that area and try to look for it, yeah. and that way you can try to see all the animals you want to see. Jaguar. Sounds like fun. So I want to get some help from the happy nomad couple. This is yeah. Cool. We could help you out. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, this has been the Rise Above show. I am Joe Peroni. I'm Heidi Mancini. And? We're the happy nomad couple. <laughs> <laughs>